highlight your test and mark on it, but not do our revisions right yet, because I'm probably just going to give you time at the end of class to actually work on doing those. Six one two. If you have it, turn it in. Some of you already got it back, guys. Block three thinks they've got the win in the bag. Because I, I told them your percentage last week, and they're like, "Oh, psh, we'll we'll beat them this week." Like, they're pretty confident. I would like to see them taken down a notch. Just saying, I can't make that happen. You can make that happen. So turn your homework in. Six one one six one two. Turn them in by the end of the day. If you really, like, you were trying and you couldn't get them done, you go home and get them done tonight, like, you can still, like, email pictures of it, and it will still count as on time. Um, but we're doing, like, today, like, Tuesday is not going to count as on time, right? Today is when it's due. needs to be turned in today. All right, let's talk about the mastery that you have back in front of you. I hope you did not put it away yet, because why would you think we're not going to talk about it? We're going to go problem by problem. I'm going to give you no answers. What I'm going to give you is the advice of what to highlight or what notes to make or what to go look at in your math notes. So if you don't have your chapter five math notes out yet, get them out. If you lost them, use Schoology. The math notes live in Schoology in the chapter five folder. I'm going to use my paper math notes because they're easier and I can highlight and write on them, but they are also in Schoology. So I should see a whole lot of these packets around the room, worried about the few people that I don't see having this packet. So, per cent, if we don't remember what per cent means, we probably just need to come review that with me. But hopefully everyone can talk about cent meaning what? 100. 100. So, the biggest mistakes I saw here were with C and D. No matter if you have a little percent or a big percent, it means per 100. Out of 100. For every 100 regardless of if our percent is over 100, it still means per 100, right? So all because this is a three-digit number does not mean now you're over 1,000. It's over 100, period. If you are eating and distracted, remember, this is being recorded. You can get back to it later if you realize, like, oh, crap, I was paying more attention to my juice than I was to the math. Glenna attempted 420 shots. That's how many arrows she fired. That does not mean that was her 85%. We need to find the 85%. And again, our 10% checkpoint rule would be really good there. A nice way that you could start that problem would be setting up, okay, if 420 shots is 100%, where do I go from there? And you could do a few different percents along the way to end up getting to your 85%. Moving on. Number three, Mr. Krabs had a $40 bill. Not, not like a piece of paper. Like that's the thing he has to pay. Right? If that's the amount they drop on your table and tell you you have to pay, what percent is that $40? 100. That's your 100%. So you could also start this problem setting up a proportion of your $40 is your 100%. Now you could also just try to figure out what percent is $5.60. Or you could work this, I don't necessarily want to say backwards, but it's kind of backwards because we're going down. You could figure out what's 10%, what is 5%, if I know those, what is 15%? Did he tip that much or not? Guys, we're not going to spend very long talking about any of these problems. If you're trying to do your revision right now, stop. We're just talking about these so you've got the advice moving forward. And no, to say it again and show it again, no new work on the original test. I'm not grading anything that you write on the original test. It is too complicated. I've got people erasing stuff that I've already marked as wrong. And now you're writing the right answer where there's a, an X in pen. I can't erase that stuff. And I'm not going to, even if I could, 
New work goes on your graph paper. Are we clear? I am tired of people ignoring directions. Like, I'm just not going to do it anymore. Like, I keep trying to, like, okay, well, I'll deal with this. I'll flip that. I'll find it. I'll, like, no. You're making my job way too hard. I got a lot of students and a lot of tests to grade. Everything new on the graph paper. Down here. Even though Margot doesn't like blue, they exist. You can't just walk up to the gumball machine and say, oh, I don't like blue. Please put all the blues somewhere that I won't get them. Like, you, that doesn't happen. So when you go to figure out your total, your total would be a good place to start. You need all of the colors added up. If you don't remember how to do an or situation, this is where your math notes would be really convenient. Chapter 5, math notes. Hey, look, we talked about this in class and made notes about the or situation versus the and situation. We made notes in our notes. Hey, Miss Hassan. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just kind of hitting them over the head with the I told you so sort of thing. All right, and or or, they are different situations. Or, this is an or, not an and. Flipping on. Guys, this is what most, 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 most people did wrong. Which tells me you obviously haven't cared about the probability trees we've practiced on. Which, I like, I can only try so hard. I can't care for you. I care about you, but I can't put in the effort for you. When you're asked to make a probability tree, if you don't know what you're doing, go and check your notes. I make these notes so you know what you're doing. The first layer of your tree are the first possible options from the first choice, or in this case, the first spinner. But my first layer of this tree Whatever you're going to pick first, I don't care what you pick first. Most people are used to like Chipotle and the fact that you're probably going to pick like rice first or whatever. Your tree should not start with salsa, chicken, rice as the three branches. Your tree should start with the first choice. If I say I'm going to pick rice first, I have rice or no rice. Not salsa, protein, like like. I have to choose, am I going the path with rice or going the path with no rice? And then I keep branching. But our amount of final options is only the amount at the end. Because guys, this right here, if you're looking in your math notes, this is not just red. That's red that came after black. So this is black red. That is the actual outcome is black than red, not just red. So this includes this. This red includes this black. So here we only have six total options, not eight. There are six total options. And that's literally what I write right here. Questions on the probability tree, because I'm not going to go very deep into it with number seven. Because again, your first branch, I know, I'll come back to number six. Your first branch in number seven should be the first thing Mr. Flynn's going to put on. So he's got to pick his pants, right? So the first choice is, am I wearing blue or brown or black? That should be our first branches. Not pants, shirt, to, like, no, it's the first choice you make. Emery. So if you want to write burrito, you could write that out here and say, like, I'm making a burrito. My first choice is, so you'll end up with, like, I'm not going to, this is not specific. This is very general. You'll end up with more branches here, and off of those branches, you'll end up with more branches here, like, off each one. So there's going to be a ton of branches out here. I mean, not a ton. But then out here is the actual burrito you made that involved this choice, this choice, and this choice. 
right? But to make your burrito, you need all of these. So this is really only one burrito that involves all three of these choices. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sweet. Like down here, Mr. Flynn will have one outfit that involves pants and shirt and tie. Although today he might not have a tie on because it's a Friday. Number six. If your paper says red, question mark, I'm trying to save you from breaking the law. Yeah, I'm trying to save you from breaking the law. What would you do at a red light? Stop. So, what is the probability you have to stop needs to also include the red light? If you said your probability of stopping is 5 out of 90, you're stopping for the yellow light and not for the red light. You're going to get arrested. So, if you decide to stop, hey, yellow is up to you. Yellow is your choice, whether you're going to stop or go. And some of you said, well, if I stop for yellow, it's this probability. If I don't go for yellow, it's this probability. And they gave me two different probabilities. I'm like, that's okay. You can do that. But if you go ahead and say, I will stop at every yellow, then down here, you know how many seconds you've decided would be stop. But guys, you also need to total up what's the total time in that light cycle. Right? Like how much time does it take for the light to get back to the beginning? where it started. Back here, we almost all got the spinners right. Actually, I think we did all get the spinners right. Probability table, friends. A lot of you have this highlighted on your paper because you did not read. You thought that said tree. It says table. To make a probability table, we make a table, right? A table. And if I forget how to make a probability table, hey, look, it's right here in my math notes. That's all I'm talking about that. Number nine, if you would like to 5D process, that is totally fine. The second side is five feet longer than the first. Okay, well, I guess I need to call the first something. So, I don't know if I call the first F. What could I write for the second side? This is not a fraction, by the way. It is like an underline. The second side is five feet longer than the first. Okay. Five feet longer? Longer than what? I don't know. I guess I could call it like F for the first. The third side. Three feet longer than twice the first. Three feet longer than what? Twice the so how would I write that? 2F or X, whatever you want to use. I, I just put F for the first side. But guys, I have my second side. I have my third side. What about my first side? Some of us forgot about the first side. Guys, we still need to talk about what is the first. We have three sides of the triangle. Now, if you're going to use the 5D process, then you're checking, do I total up to 48? Right, so that's how we would use our 5D process. You, you're totally fine to use 5D there. It just tends to take a little bit longer. Lane, did you have a question? I thought I saw you smile. Now, if you want to algebra this, you can really just take these put them all together and say, okay, those are all going to be equal to 48 and then solve it like we've been doing in class. But you don't have to. You could. You don't have to. In chapter 6, we will have to. And on the back, more possible 5D or algebra. Matt and Dominic, please don't forget about one of them. They are both going fishing. They both caught fish. So we have Matt equals... We have Dominic equals. What will Dominic equal? Well, they tell us. Dominic caught, oh, I guess I should be highlighting in blue since I wrote D in blue. Dominic caught one less than three times as many fish as Matt. But then don't forget about what Matt caught. A 
11. Don't forget about the shorter piece or don't forget about the longer piece. So if you wanted to draw like a picture here, you could say like, all right, here's my entire rope. It's 84. I'm going to cut it and one's going to be shorter than the other. So I don't know how to draw like cut. And that's kind of when I'm making like designs. That's sort of how I draw a cut. Thank you. So then they tell us the long piece. Okay, so that would be like this side of it. But don't forget about the short piece. It's shorter, but don't forget about it. We would probably need to define a variable, right, and work that. You could 5D process that. Guys, down here, I literally give you the expressions. You could still 5D process this, or you could algebra. Questions? You have the next nine minutes to work on your revisions because I would rather try to get us all closer to mastery than try to keep moving forward in lessons. However, if you get your, master, or if you get your revisions done, 614 is back there. You're welcome to work on it. You know how to do what's on 614. Like, you've been intro to it. We probably still need some more practice to be, like, comfortable. But you you had a good introduction to it yesterday. So feel free to go ahead and work on that when you get a chance. Yes. Yeah, you should have already. Perry's all out there now, so it might be a little crazy. 